Welcome to the Outside Obliteration Station! Got another two levels of Let's Play Global Defense Force 2 Let's Play for you today! First of all, we're playing as the Infantry Man. We've got a brand new Goliath variant to show off. More on that after you read all of this. Are you reading it? It's important. Plot information. Choose your weapons well, it says. And the well chosen, these weapons shall be and have been. Anyway, here's the level. We got three giant spiders, a couple of uh, queen ants. A big bomber flying around and somewhere in the background you can just see his head in front of me there is a Saurus anyway first priority is get rid of the bomber mainly because of the absolutely massive slowdown it causes by blowing up lots of buildings at once this is the Goliath R custom it fires 20 rockets very quickly, they don't have much of a blast radius, they don't do much damage, but there are 20 of them. This is very nice. It's about as accurate as hitting somebody over the face of a bit of old brick or something, I don't know. They fly all over the place, but it's good enough for attacking the larger enemies in the game, which we shall be doing a lot from this point forward. That does it for that helicopter. We've got the SG-6 with us. I've noted before that the SG-6 does not have the highest damage per second of all the shotguns we've got. The Sparrow shot is pretty much impossible to beat in that regard at the moment. However, what the SG-6 does have is an extra 50 meters of range. There's a full 50% extra compared to the Sparrow Shot, which is quite useful when dealing with large beasties. Very hard to tell how far away these beasties are. Are they within 100 meters? Are they within 150 meters? There's only one way to find out. And that's through the judicial use of bullets. Anyway, this is actually the first level with Asaurus and other enemies. How about that? First time we've seen giant spiders away from regular spiders. And it's also the first time we've seen uh, these queen ants for quite a while. When was the last time we fought some queen ants? Hmm, can't remember. It's definitely been some since that whole underground expedition where we went and killed a couple of them. Anyway, the Goliath R custom. Very necessary for these pair of levels I'm showing you today. Very necessary indeed. Also, another point of note, you can see two blue dots on the radar. Both of those are tanks. Yet another level, well, second level so far, that has two tanks at once. Tanks for the memories. I don't go anywhere near them, so we show them off though. So I'm too busy killing big spiders. Explosions. Stay down! There's the last of the spiders, I believe. Spiders are probably the most dangerous enemies in this level. But be careful, they can kill you. Really, the Saurus is fairly hard to be killed by. I mean, once you know to stay out of its frontal area where it's going to be breathing fire. Azorus is no problem at all, unless you're simple. Anyway, I'm miles away from the tank, so I'm just gonna roll over here. The last enemy, or pair of enemies, one or two. There's either one or two queen ants to deal with. I think it's probably only one. The uh, Sparrow Shot actually delivers a full 6,000 damage 
in about five and a half seconds, including reload. Anyway, that was not that long. Let's see how the Pale Wing would handle such a level. I decided not to be completely cheap, and I've equipped the Battle Ram instead of a rapier for this. Battle Ram, fairly brokenly powerful, but nowhere near on the same level as the Rapier series. Being able to kill most of these enemies in two or three shots is quite nice. Not quite as quick, just rapiering them though. Rapiering? Rapiering? Hmm. Definitely not raping. There's a Saurus. Let's give it a saw belly. It's going to be Thunderbow at 15x. Never going to stop using this weapon because it's just not that tasty. Speaking of tasty, tubs. While the Battle Ram isn't the best weapon in the world, it will always hold a special place in my heart, being the very first weapon in this game that I realised was incredibly broken. Killing big enemies in two shots. You know, I think you can take down a carrier in two shots. I remember the first time I thought, hmm, what would happen if I flew up there and just used this? And I was treated to riding a giant flying saucer down to the floor while it exploded. You just don't get that in many other games. There's quite a lot of health just gone there from this spider. So an interesting thing, these giant enemy types, the uh, spider and the queen ants, obey exactly the same weapon drop item drop rules that the regular size ones do, whereas, whereas the Saurus will always drop four items. These guys will occasionally not drop anything, and when they do drop something it will only be one. See that spider? In fact the spider before it didn't drop absolutely anything at all. No prizes. The only regular, like, reliable way to get health pickups in this level is to defeat the Saurus. He always drops a few. We might not drop a health pickup. He's likely to. Stopping here to regain my energy bar. And that's how you put down a giant ant in style. The best thing about the Battle Ram is how it makes things are absolutely flying when they die. Anyway, no time for menus and stuff. We've got a pack level today, and we are on to level 67. In the wise and immortal words of YouTube subscriber Jockey Boyful, level 67 is awesome. How right he is, this is an awesome level. If you read that thing instead of listening to me prattle on, you'll know that we've got some tiny sauruses to deal with. Yep, here's one. Spend a bit of time showing it off. Works exactly like a regular saurus does, except it's very small. It can still be damaged by its charge, and it will eventually breathe fire. There's two of them. I'm going to be knocked for six by the second one coming at me in a moment. There we go. And these guys are pathetic. They are no challenge at all. Hmm, suspicious. Almost as if they're merely a distraction and not the main point of the level at all. No, the main point of the level is about to appear single red dot on the radar. Jesus Christ, look at the size of that thing. Don't know what this thing's name is, 
I only really get the names of the enemies from the blurbs, and the blurb for this level cleverly misses out the incredible lag causing giant Saurus. I'm going to call him Megasaurus. This guy is a challenge. He is ridiculously difficult. There is no way you're going to get through this level unless you bring the specific weapon you need to deal with him. The SNR 229R, which I waffled about like four videos ago, is not such a weapon. It's not such a weapon indeed. It's a rapid firing sniper rifle. Very rapid firing sniper rifle, but this, the Goliath R Custom, that is what we need to defeat this guy. The way to fight this guy is to be near him, but not too near him. He's going to be constantly charging. He behaves pretty much identically to a regular Saurus, but on a much more enormous scale. Thankfully that means we can do sneaky stuff like slip between his legs as he charges. What the Goliath R Custom does is do just enough damage and explosions to make him flinch, stop running and turn around. What you do not want this guy to do is use his fire attack. Fire attack is a bit of a joke on a regular sized Saurus because you can simply, well, not be in the way of it by rolling to the side. That is not possible against this guy. It will turn to face you and it has such a wide radius you basically have to be underneath him to avoid it. See there, I got hit a little bit. Also, you may not have noticed while fighting Sauruses in the past until you get to this guy Saurus actually has two different fire animations. One where he leans forward and breathes fire, and one where he looks down and breathes fire. The one where he looks down and breathes fire is not a good thing. Oh Christ, he's about to do it, he's about to do it. Oh! Luckily that building shielded me somewhat, and only, it only took off almost half of my health. Now the SNR 2279R has quite a good damage per second for chipping away at him. Anyway, when I first played this, this was a complete roadblock. Just could not get past him. It took many, many tries. In fact, during my test recordings, I took about 10 attempts to try and defeat this guy. When I actually came to recording, I did him in one try. Very pleased with that. I had less stuff to uh, cut out. Quite pleased with this uh, run. Don't get hit too many times. And he is down. When I said he was a roadblock, he was a roadblock for the inventory man. He is no way a roadblock for the pale wing. Before I discovered just how devastating the Rapier series was. When I first played this game, I basically used the Rapier a bit and just went, hmm, it's nice, but I can't hit enemies too far away, so I'm not going to use it anymore. That was foolish of me! Anyway, when I first played this game, I took him out by running between his legs and attacking him with the uh, Battle Ram. My one of my favourite not that good weapons I keep banging on about. Banged on about it in this very video, in fact. Short term memory. It's a good thing. Anyway, that was a fairly effective way of killing him. I think it probably took about five or six blasts. Something silly. But, I mean, let's look at this. Just drawing a line down his tail. Shoot with it with the Thunder Bow. And. He's down! Even the mighty Megasaurus becomes a joke before the might of the rapier. Anyway, that's it for today. 